at some point you're going to have a hard day or that you just want to give up. You could be dreading doing math lessons with your child because she always cries. It might be writing that makes him throw a temper tantrum. It could be your child using every form of body language to let you know that they hate homeschooling and you for making them do it. It might just be one more eye roll. Or it could be the monotony that makes even you want to scream and leave the house. Homeschooling has a unique set of challenges when it comes to attitude. A child can display these things at regular school, but for homeschooling it can come out on a whole new level. And part of that is because you don't have the peer pressure of the classroom. No one gets to lie under their desk at school and moan for an hour about how they don't want to do it. Most children learn to repress their disagreements for fear of what others might think of them. And for the few that don't, there's a built-in hierarchy of punishments from the look by your teacher to being expelled. But you don't get any of that when you homeschool. In fact, your kid already knows that they can push you much further than any other planet, any other grown up on the whole planet, and that you'll still have to take care of them. So let's talk about how we can deal with the challenges of attitude. You'll do much better if you start out the school year by talking about what you expect. Kind of like the first day of class when your teacher goes over the syllabus, but it doesn't need to be that formal. But if you can, have a talk with your kids about why you're homeschooling and what you expect. It can be something like, we're homeschooling for our health and safety this year. I know that it won't be the same, but we're a family and we'll get through this together. I know that there's things that we all miss, but let's find enjoyment in our days. Let's be thankful that we have another way to take care of your education. I expect you to work hard this year. We're going to make the best of this year that we can. And then I would usually promise to build in things that they can look forward to, like studying the subjects that they're interested in or allowing them time to pursue a hobby. So on the days that you have someone getting emotional about school, it's better to just stop completely what you're doing and take the time to address their attitude. So my daughter is prone to tears and I warn her that if she keeps crying, she will need to go lie down until she feels better. And it gives her the choice. Sometimes she is tired and giving her space to feel her feelings works. She usually comes back much better and makes apologies if necessary. My son, on the other hand, likes to give me attitude. So when he does, I warn him that if he continues, he will miss out on screen time. I tell him that a cheerful heart will be a happy heart or a Bible verse that would be applicable. If they are starting to get angry, I usually try to distract them so I pick something that they like to talk about and we'll just spend a few minutes talking about like whatever they're trying to accomplish in Minecraft or their new Hatchimal. And then after a few minutes, I'll say, so it looks like you're having trouble with, or sometimes you can challenge them. One time my kids were so mad at me because I made them do school before they could go out for a snow day. Everyone else was home. But I told them we don't get snow days. We get nice weather days where we go to the park or the zoo but that didn't make them feel better. So I let that be their writing assignment for the day. I said, what rules would you make if you were in charge? And that gave them a positive way to express their feelings and got school done. But in general, you don't wanna let bad attitudes go because then they'll figure that they're allowed to do that and they'll do it every day. Better to nip it in the bud. If they refuse to change their attitudes, then it's up to you to play principal. So I keep a mental list of all the punishments, doing chores, missing out on screen time, early bedtime, no friends, extra work, taking a nap, and the worst of all is saying that they'll have to do school with my husband because my husband is an old school mean teacher when it comes to work. No one wants to do that, but I like to give these as consequences. So. If you blank, then you'll have to blank. <laughs> and that will usually work. Sometimes my kids do the work and they'll be writing angry, like where they write it all super big like they were in kindergarten. And I'll say, that's not how we do school. You need to redo that and make it nice. And so they'll erase it and then they'll comply because they don't wanna have to <laughs> have a punishment. 
Now, another big challenge is boredom. At some point in the year, you'll hit this one. You can try to power through it, and then you'll all be miserable. You have to find a way to break it. So my go-to for this would usually be a field trip, but for me, that's not an option right now. So I've got to get creative. Right now, I'm currently giving my girls like a cute animal YouTube when we get them with school. Or other good breaks might be having a movie for school. Like recently, we watched the movie Hidden Figures because it had to do with the space unit that we were talking about, as well as civil rights. Um, I've ordered a new craft or a toy as a reward, reducing the number of subjects. So right now we're doing math on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and language arts on Tuesday, Thursday. A pajama day, which right now every day is probably pajama day. You could pick a country to study and then cook a meal while watching a travel video. Getting donuts for breakfast or going for a picnic. Make a bottle rocket. So we have regular contact with my parents, so my kids take turns spending the night there, and usually that's enough to break up the rut that we're in. My neighbors just took a completely secluded trip and stayed in a houseboat for a few days. Sometimes just changing up something in your environment, like putting in a new colored light bulb or rearranging the furniture, putting out a new candle. And finally, you'll probably hit burnout yourself. I know it's hard, but find something that you can look forward to. For me right now, that's a Diet Coke in the afternoon and then getting to stay up when everybody else goes to bed. Find rest. Tell them they can have all the screen time while you go take a nap. You might get the best rest of your life. And find shortcuts. You can clean the bathroom twice as fast by using coffee filters instead of a sponge. Have an older sibling help or make lunch. Let your child sweep the floor when they're done playing with Play-Doh. Parents give and give and you have to find a way to recharge. Everyone has a different level. I'm an introvert, so I build in times after their lessons. I say, all right, you guys go play. And then I breathe and I recharge. I know someone who has lunch in a completely separate room from her kids. <laughs> so know yourself and what you need. Keep something in mind that will help you stay strong when you want to quit. Whatever is making you want to homeschool right now, don't forget it. Remind yourself of the positives. So there's some advice of how to make those hard days not such a big deal.